Let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a little, a little lengthier than usual. How are you doing? Um. <clears throat> wow. Actually, I'm getting over a cold. That's why I had to zoom in. Yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you sound. I can hear the the congestion. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are tricky. I had one earlier. I think I I got a vaccine. You know, for flu and caught a cold. <laughs> So that was that was in the fall. Uh, woo! Anyway, the weather's been very nice. You know, it's been you know warmer, more like yeah, spring. It's, you know? it's, yes, yeah. it's very much. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, a um, couple of things. Uh, let me. Uh, One of the uh, themes that we, uh, we're not going to play basketball, but one of the themes uh, is uh, that we were working on yesterday is uh, the hips as ball and socket joints. Okay. Now, most of the times when we turn the hips, we twist the body. We twist the body. Da, da. Okay. Now, what happens? I twist the body. And then there's a force coming, let's say, from that to that. And I run into that force. Now, what can happen is you can go under, whoops, this is where, right? Now, if I just twist into the force, but we can, or conversely, we can go over, okay? So, for example, See, both hips are going to go the way the ball goes. Okay. Now, if I modify things, my rear hip is going this way, but my forward hip is going that way. So I have two separate rotations. Again, this is common. Okay, and my rear hip goes that way, but my forward hip goes more like that, like it kind of spirals as it rotates a bit. Okay, conversely, if I'm going to turn this way, my rear hip does this, but my forward hip does that. And therefore, if there's some sort of an obstacle or a force coming, and go over it or under it, okay? So that, that's just something that we've been kind of, uh, oh, kind of researching a little bit. Uh, Cliff, anything you might want to add on that one? If you have a, some sort of a ball, I mean, you have kids, so there's probably a ball. Yeah, I can, I, I can go grab a ball. Most of the balls are in the yard because we don't want the yeah. kids throwing them around the house, you know. Yeah, well, that's um, true. That's true. But uh, yeah, um, that makes. I mean, that makes sense. The way it, the, the the body moves, right? With the way the body moves. <laughs> yeah. So you know, one of the things that we're doing is, you know, we're there's a lot of. I, I'm not sure whether my definition of is that core development. Well, the core development's got to include the hips, but the you know core development also includes the stability of the core area. And what's kind of interesting, for example, is when you try this, if the core is unstable, the core is unstable, you lose your balance. That's why people just twist. Yeah. Level hips, hips level, level hips, hips level. But here, as I'm going that way, see my back hip is turning this way, but my forward hip is actually kind of going more in that direction. Feel the spiral more. The, the back hip kind of provides a, a, a base, okay? If, uh, that's hard to do. But forward hip is, okay? All right? 
Yeah, yeah, I got a. I actually got a hot air balloon that one of the kids had blown up and left lying in the living room. That's the right size and shape. So yeah, we'll we keep going. We'll lose my balance. I can take a step. In which case my right hip goes that way, but my forward hip is the direction I'm turning this that way. In reverse, the back hip, but the forward hip has that rotation. Okay? And one way of kind of utilizing it, I put this uh, mat out. One of the best exercises forward knee down, back leg swings. Okay. Here, for example, the hips rotate, but even here, the, the, the front hip is not just, see, this is the twist of the body. Raise. Now this is the tricky one. I'm going to put this down. Raise the other leg. Raising the other leg creates. So this rear hip is this way, but this raising the leg creates that motion. And likewise, we we get the back leg swinging. Okay. And the other thing you, you do here is instead of going clunk, the back leg swinging, do it slow, it develops the core stability. So just, you know, just, uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that on any sort of hard surface, but I put this down, which is a little bit of a mat. And I do it slow, I don't go clunk, 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 okay? I'm still doing this Wadi Waza, you know, my age. I still said say so, okay? So, um, I just thought I would kind of bring that one up. Um, somebody grabs your wrist. See, the rear hip goes this way, but the other hip kind of, see the shape of the hand and the hip? Okay, so it's in all the Aikido movements. Ikkyo motion. If I twist the hips, I wind up twisting the arm. But here, Same thing, twist, but, and that generates, you know, more what I call a thrusting motion, okay? So, uh, just, just things to, to ponder, all right? Um, for example, let's say, go this way, 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 this way. This way. This way. This one, right? I'm going to go that way. Well, the back here, you know, provides a stability. It's rotating this way. However, the forward hip is turning that way. So it produces a, a movement like that. Likewise, I go this way, the back hip, but the forward hip is. So some of the changes we do, especially the fire water changes. Here, the left hip moves that way, but the right hip, no, obviously the hip doesn't go that way, but it rotates along that. And then here, and then here, and here. The free movement of the staff, so you're integrating kind of your interior structure, your core balance, move like that. 
So, and it's hard to do this information, you know, which is where we start. So to integrate it, okay. The information starts to flow. I'm going to create a process. Now, for example, here, performing kind of the, this motion. The rear hip is still kind of going that way. The forward hip comes that way. And so we get this. So I continue the movement by repositioning the hands. And then what we have, for example, right there is the double, the two handed, yeah. Figure eight, one hand's easy. Figure eight, two hands, say, back hip, forward hip, one of this way, which you really see is the, the forward hip rotating. And then I catch and continue the rotation. And I move. Now, so those are just basic drills you can do at home. Uh, careful not to knock things off the wall, okay? Yeah, we'll just put this down there for a bit. Left hip, right hip. What you really see in the staff is the forward hip motion, but it has the support of the back, the back hip. And all the while, if you're kind of doing this, uh, there's a core stability. Now, if I try to do this without the core stability, everything just sort of goes like that. So when, when you get this, this flowing motion, you're, you're opening the hips, opening the hips, opening the hips. But the hips integrate. The back hip supports the motion. The forward hip, see if I go twist, twist, for one thing, it stops, I gotta start the movement. But if it goes this way, see the movement actually continues. Right. And then you're shifting. The other, the left hip is the level supporting hip, the other hip is. Then we're kind of going through what we call the fire water changes. Come down, come up, come down, come up, grab with both. You have your. Um, now, the back hip is the, the forward hip. You see how the hands are kind of moving now? This is how the hip is turning. Now, if I'm going to continue, I read the hip, it continues out. What I just did is go here by establishing this, my right foot, my right hip becomes the, the support hip, and then to continue going that way, or 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 that way. Okay. So, any uh, questions? Um, <clears throat> no questions. I mean, I'm I'm trying this with. Uh, I found a ball shaped thing, which is a yeah. hot air balloon that the kids have blown up. And was using that okay. earlier, and I'm using the Joe yeah. now, and that works very well. It, it helps me focus on the core stability and the uh, the hips, yeah. you know, moving in an integrated way. So it's really um, it's uh, interesting how it's a, a kind of both a visualization. It's it's kind of a visualization, but it's kind of a physical visualization, if that makes sense. It's you know, that's, it's an abstraction. That's, yeah. that's it's important. an abstraction, but it's it's physical. 
Uh, what, what would you, you rephrase that again? It's a distraction. So it's, a, it's an abstraction of the hip movement, abstraction. right? But instead of like, okay. instead of like in my head, an abstraction, it's actually a physical metaphor for how the hip moves, which makes it more useful, I think, because it's in the body and not just me thinking about it while I'm doing it. The happiest moment in Albert Einstein's life. He's running a thought experiment. He's in free fall. He realizes he doesn't feel his own weight in free fall. And what he's getting is a certain amount of acceleration, and he's still dealing with gravity. And so he gets this insight. He says, you know, maybe gravity and acceleration are pretty much the same thing. That was the... <laughs> See, if, I'm, if he's in his head, I'm falling. I'm going to hit the ground. Holy crap. You know what I mean? But he's realizing that state of free fall. Now, the, the, eventually, with, without a parachute or something, you've got impact to deal with and you know gravity the force there's a certain acceleration as you're going the longer you fall right the faster you're falling the greater the impact but he felt it didn't he it wasn't just in his head yeah i'm kind of weightless Ooh, wow 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 happiest moment of his life i mean i'm sure he had other happy moments but that's usually the happiest moment in Albert Einstein's life was. But you see, it, yeah, it's it's an abstraction. But you're feeling it, aren't you? Yes or no? <laughs> um, Sure. Yes. But, and it, that story always reminds me of the physicist Stephen Hawking, who uh, late in his life was given the opportunity to ride in that 747 that creates periods of weightlessness for about 30 seconds right and there's this photo of him weightless just grin this huge grin uh so stephen hawking got to actually live that experiment of albert einstein's yeah. well one of the things that that's kind of interesting is, is that so many things are for example i'm going to do so we can like this, like this, like this, and like this, and like this, and like this. Guess what? I'm feeling my weight, but it feels very really fluid. It's almost like trying to weight this thing. Boom, 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 boom. And it's almost like the movements create themselves through you. And that's what I try to gear towards. Somebody grabs my wrist, I gotta go into I'm gonna put my shoulder into it and twist my body. So, Flip. Flip. Now, in that particular one, it's kind of interesting, is that the forward hip turns with the back hip. And then, you know, forward hip turns with the back hip. And so, you know, you can go through. See, the Aikido techniques, for all sense, they were like Albert Einstein's equations. He was solving some Oh, just just problems, okay? I, I, one of the things I try to do is, okay, I want to explore the universe. That's what I keep, oh, since they said. Apparently, once he told uh, Robert Nadeau, since the size is relative, you can have a whole universe in your little pinky, okay? We come out of the universe, everything we, you know, we're, we're kind of a, therefore within us on some level, you know, we, we tend to think of, DNA and proteins and structures, but there's a, we come out of the universe. The design of the universe is in us. So as I explore the universe, I, I kind of, you know, there's a new is this more fluid. I can do this stuff without a, a lot of conscious thought, but it's a little bit like Elmer. I like, not quite like Einstein, thought experiment, but you know, move, move another hand. That hip, a right hip, left hip, right hip, catch it. 
It continues on. In on, 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 in on. Boom. Boom. So for me, what I'm doing there, I'm uh, pretend I'm Albert Einstein I'm writing the equations on the blackboard, exploring the universe. And so, you know, what we're doing right now is, is obviously a bit more physical than what Mr. Einstein did, but he, in his thought experiments, uh, included himself, you know. He's running around at light speed and he's shaving with a mirror. And the question is, because he's at light speed and everything is the light being reflected back is what we see visually. Would he see himself shaving if he was traveling at the speed of light? Those are, those are thought experiments. Even, even to come up with the thought experiment that requires what? Imagination. And most people think of imagination as being mental. No, there's a mental part to it. We're right about here. Energy is moving. Energy is shaking themselves. Here, the body, for me, is, is more of a transparency where things don't get in, you know, do not interfere with what is going on. Okay? Oh, what's kind of nice is if you're here, see, I gotta go this way, then I'm gonna twist to go the other way. Boom, boom, I have to set but right about here. Both this direction and that direction, and that direction, and oops, this, that direction, and that direction. Uh, it's one continuous movement of flow. More flow, but flow, boom, flow, boom, 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 boom. So what happens is that, you know, the Do Sensei talks about creating a character. The character that, that is standing there is clear and fluid and creative. There's a quality. And, you know, of course, there's energy moving off of those qualities. So... <clears throat> So, you know, if I were to describe when I'm doing that, uh, I, to some degree, the weight of the body is there, but it, the, the, the sense of body is very different. Body is energy, fluid, intelligence, meaning that you, you know, you go that way and you can reverse. You go that way and you can reverse. That way you can reverse. Okay, now I have to think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go that way. No. The thought process is in the movement. Therefore, your mind and your body are, are, are talking to one another, let's just say. Uh, anything come up? Just noticing as I do these movements with the staff, how it affects. And I'm remembering early on in earlier lessons on fire water you had us going um you know uh sort of the same direction as we were turning and the opposite direction as we were turning yeah okay right, yeah. right? and so i tried both of those and it it feels pretty smooth either way at this point so so that's nice you know, well when i was sensei kind of talks about fire and water there's there's two I mean, you know, there's, there's, you know, there are many interpretations, okay? One, fire and water kind of represent parents, okay? We tend to think fire and water is being somewhat antagonistic. Now you can boil water and all of a sudden you get steam, so they can work as a team that way. But the water can extinguish the fire or the fire can burn the water off but they produce steam, okay? Now, what happens, for example, we can kind of 
sometimes sort of lately we've been kind of going into yin yang is izanagi izanami. Okay, and you can you could argue, you know, argue. I mean, it's written down, yeah, I just wrote down certain places, but izanagi fire, izanami water. They're in balance. One's not dominating the other, okay? Izanagi doesn't burn Izanagi off. Izanami doesn't drown or extinguish Izanagi. Steam. Not steam. The particles of you know, in motion. Or, conversely, Izanagi, Izanami procreate. Boom, boom, boom. And each of these movements is a child of Izanagi Izanami. <laughs> then we get into a little bit what O Sensei might have called Take Fusu, martial generating. Take is an old reading of Bu, as in martial art Budo. But Mutsu is an older reading of Umu, which is to be born or to give birth. Now, if, if izanagi is dominating the motion, or izanami is dominating the motion, if izanami is dominating, sometimes the movement's a little too passive. And if izanagi is dominating the movement, then the movements are kind of a little too that way, right? But they're in balance, they're steam. And there's movement of the part particles within the steam. This thing kind of represents a uh, kind of a harmony between these and like these and not. So if we're going to go this way. And I mean, if you can put your hand into steam, you'll burn yourself. Okay, if you put your hands in fire, you're going to burn yourself. So you got to watch the steam analogy. But the thing is, the steam does not burn itself, does it? Yeah. Ah. So, for those things, I really kind of like the fire water steam a bit. But he kind of spews that from the center, which is more Izana. G, I would say, the fire. Izanami can be the, the circle. And I'm more of a circle person. Of course, the fire is necessary. Uh, water by itself can do certain things. Fire by itself can do certain things. When you get fire, water, water, fire, then you, uh, you can cook. If you just have fire, that's fine. It'll keep you. <laughs> It'll keep you what? It'll keep you warm. It'll keep dangerous beasts away from you, maybe. You know, if you're in the wilderness, wilderness. And water. We need it. But we can also drown in it. And fire can consume us. So we're talking about the balance of them. Okay. Now, one of the, the things on uh, the, the expression is, you know, suika no koryu. It's a Japanese term. And it's a difficult one. But when you say, if you're talking physical fire, physical water, it doesn't make any sense. Because, okay, fire can extinguish water. But what if fire activates water? And what if water activates the fire? So it's the cycle of fire activating water, water activating fire, fire one, and boom, 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 boom. And a couple things. When I'm in that state, I feel very active, but I feel very calm. And if you say about the body, the body itself, boom, 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 all these changes, it feels light and fluid. Am I feeling the body? Kind of, but it's not clunk, 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 clunk. Boom, 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 boom. 
And I like that because, you know, uh, what happens through that? Taki and Musu is giving birth, is creating. And, you know, I mean, kind of in that creative flow, my, my consciousness expands. My center alignment, core, hips, feet, they, they integrate. And so, you know, the combination for me and this, you know, becomes kind of like a... Okay. I remember one time, there was a, a, you know, just a snippet video of Stephen Curry doing some fantastic stuff with the basketball. And so I posted it on Facebook. I said, uh, a Chet Baker jazz solo in movement, which is what it was. He's creating. It was beautiful. And sports are entertaining. But there's a chosen few that elevate the sport into art. They're creators. So we're talking about just through the simple act of uh, integrating the movement of your hips, developing some core balance, you give yourself the tools to create. Let me check and see what the time is like. Any questions come up? Um, just a, a comment, which is that, you know, if you do, uh, if you do a lot of like, uh, personal trainer, gym workouts, that, that kind of thing. They talk a lot about core strength, but nobody really talks about core balance. That's correct. And I think core balance is just, you know, when you put it that way, it's like, oh yeah, this is what you need to have in yeah. order to avoid having, you know, debilitating aches and pains, you know, as a result of doing all this exercise or just aging. You know, like yeah. for the body needs to be in balance or you're going to, you know, just get more and more out of whack the older you are and the more exercise you do. Well, the way that I describe it, because I teach this concept, you know, especially the knee walking, I teach it at San Jose State. So we go through the movement of the hips. Okay. But, you know, if, if your hips are moving that way, which is the way I think they're intended to move, Okay, then what happens is if you lack the core balance, you're unstable. As you develop the movement of the hips, you're also developing core balance. So I talk about core development, which includes strength, but also includes the balance, yes. And then you're integrating the, the movement of your hips with that core balance. Okay? Yeah, so that's, that's my main thesis right there. Now, one of the things, for example, let's just examine that motion. Now, the thrusting motion. Now, one of the things you see is the thrust goes out straight, but it really follows a spiral. So if there's an incoming, you don't go this way in class with the incoming. You hit your target, show the opening without being hit yourself. And you can move to the side, but most people to the side, step and do that. Mm. Okay, now, see the forward hip, the rear hip, And what you see is the thrust, even though 
is, see, from my standpoint, the thrust is straight. But visually, it spirals to its intended target. And again, the, hip, the back hip, the forward hip. Anyway, any any observations off of that? It's just in your basic thrusting motion. Um yeah, you know, I wouldn't have thought to connect that to, you know, the kind of movement we were doing with the ball practice at the beginning of class, but yeah. I can see it. I can totally see it. Well, sometimes, you know, the, the point that's made a lot, you know, a, a lot of uh, basketball, you watch film. Okay. And um, the point one coach made to a player is you have to see it before you can do it or be it. Okay. Uh, one of the warrior young players who's kind of starting to really step into who he is, Jonathan Kuminga. He grew up in the Congo. And <laughs> he would go to a coffee house that you could get online with, put some money in, use the computer, and watch YouTube videos of Kobe Bryant. And uh, that's, uh, and so, you know, there are a lot of similarities, okay? He's a super athlete. In fact, he came in, I think, at age 19, the Warriors won a title that year, so, you know, he was part of that, but, you know, he was a rookie, so he, you know, he was not like he recently won the title. And right now, with some of the, veterans aging and he's stepping up they need new legs new energy okay you know right on the on the tree that the fruit on the vine is getting a little ripe he need <laughs> more energy from the roots to grow new fruit okay so um, um, See, this is an, a hand movement, but see right here, the left hip is going that way. The right hip, however, is rotating. And this motion, the right hip is, is, is just rotating. The left hip is, so you see Aikido movements. Again, well, since I and Einstein, from my viewpoint, we're both scientists of the universe. Albert had his equations, blackboard, where Shiva had the Aikido movements, and he studied those movements a lot through the movement of the sphere, the sphere. And of course, what happens is, you know, the movements, when they're fully in, become spherical movements. And, you know, as you're researching the universe, you name fire, water, heaven, earth, I mean, 
you know, the gravity, electromagnetism, weak force, strong force. Okay, that's four forces. And in, you know, the esoteric Shinto sensei study, heaven, earth, water, fire. So you can look at these things as equations or algorithms. And as you get a, a bigger, you get a bigger understanding of yin yang or heaven, earth, water, fire, the balance of energies, the harmony of them. You are exploring the universe. Of course, you know, you're learning some movements, some Aikido technique. But as you explore the universe, you're also exploring yourself. Who am I? So it's all part of a, a glorious project, isn't it? A, a wonderful journey. Uh, any questions? Um, not again. Not really a a question. Just the the observation that um, yeah. you know we're all taught that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line but yeah. when it's biomechanics right and martial arts or dance um yeah. the shortest distance between two points is really the most efficient way of getting there without interrupting the flow dynamic right so like when you're poking with a spear or staff um a straight line toward the target is not really as efficient as that spiral motion with a curve in it. And so you can actually do the strike with a spiral motion faster than you could do a absolute straight line and with more power because it it's not working yes. against the way the body is designed. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, a lot of movements, for example, uh, that's a striking motion, but it also is an entering evading motion. They're both in the same package. They're not doing more one, you know, they're they're both part of it. Now, the way I would put it, you got two points of A, B, fire, water. But they're vibing together, they're communicating. There's no space. Okay? So as much as we're creating certain constructs around straight line, curve, ultimately, point A, point B are, are unified. There's no distance. Um, you know, go back to a, a story, you know, with uh, Sadaharu O. And, you know, his coach was a student of Weshiba O-sensei. And he's trying to coach O, who's a prodigy, having a horrible time, you know, adapting from high school to the major leagues in Japan. And, you know, he has a funny thing where everything's here and he has a little hitch. And um, so, you know, the, the coach is kind of going crazy trying to fix that. And so he says, I'm going to take this to Weshibo since I see what he says about what we're doing. And so uh, the way that uh, the coach describes it, there's a, what's called ma, it's called interval, it's called space. And you're saying, like, okay, this to that. Sure, it's, it's a straight line, but it also may be a curved line. Okay? Okay? And the way that the, uh, when the coach goes to O-sensei, he says, okay, there's the pitcher and there's the hitter. And there's the ma or the space between the pitcher and the hitter. And whoever dominates that space between them wins. If the hitter dominates that space, there's a hit. If the pitcher dominates that space, there's an out. Baseball is rigged physically so that uh, 
if you succeed three times out of 10 for a period, you are in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> Baseball is based on failure. So when you do succeed, it, it really sticks out. So the coach was saying, okay, how can we get Mr. O to own that interval? So he can hit. And Osensei's reply was very interesting. Osensei looked at Mr. O and says, you know, your problem is really that you have a horrible coach. <laughs> and so, of course, you know, the, the coach, Mr. Adekawa, I think was his name, he was a student at home in dojo. And the dojo-sensei, actually, he knew, well, you know, they, they, they knew each other in those days. He trained at Hongbu. There weren't that many people training in those days. That, you know, you, you know. But, and so, you know, of course, uh, Mr. Radical was very embarrassed because those sensei's just called him a bad coach, a fool, in essence. But what he tells Mr. O is interesting. He says, the reason your coach is off, he's talking about the space between pitcher, hitter, hitter, pitcher. And he said, the truth is, there is no ma. There is no space. So what you need to do, instead of trying to beat the pitcher, become one with the pitcher. <laughs> you say unity, two points, who gets which is faster, they're already in communication. Now, what he also told Mr. O was, when you get that, you'll know what the pitcher is going to throw before the, you know, before the pitch. And then when you really get it, the pitcher will do what you want the pitcher to do. So, don't listen to your coach, listen to me. And then the coach says something like, yeah, that's all really good. You're talking about the universe and everything like that. But what can I do to help him out? And then what Sensei told the coach, teach, teach him to learn to wait. Because when you're out there reacting to the situation, meaning bad or reacting to the pitcher, you create distance. So he says, learn to wait. And um, one of the things, Mr. O was too quick. And right about there, he, he had a hitch in his swing. So he had him stand on one leg. And now he put that leg down to do that. And so a lot of Mr. O's odyssey and baseball was learning to stand on one leg as a batter. You couldn't be too fast on one leg. You had to really find his deep center. And find his deep center, he was starting to make a connection to the picture, wasn't he? So in that way, I mean, it's a, it's a bit more of an esoteric example of, is it a curve? Is it a straight line? And according to Osensei, you can describe it one way or another. You know, Tojima Sensei would say, when you're thrusting, that's, see, that's straight. But when the hips move, you thrust in a spiral. Let's see if I can do this a little better. It's a spiral. Without, see, if you do the spiral up here and out there in the arms, you're twisting. See, from my viewpoint, it's straight. But there's that little hook. Okay, it's the same thing, relativity theory. Uh, so somebody on a train drops a ball. Person on the train sees the ball go that way, if the train's going that way. The person on the platform sees the ball go that way.
relative. See, from my standpoint, that's a straight thrust. Huh? But how the universe moves, that's a spiral. So a lot of Aikido in there, by the way. Any any <laughs> uh gets a little <clears throat> on the East Pacific side. Any any no, that's 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 not esoteric at all. That's really great insight. Um that yeah. uh you know, the spear or staff is moving straight relative to me, but yeah. relative to the room, it's traveling along a curve in a spiral, a spiral yeah. curve. Yeah. And that's fascinating. I just did a few thrusts and, and yeah. tried to sort of see it from my point of view and then switch my point of view to comparing it to where the walls of the room are. And yeah, that's really... That's that's how the shortest distance between two points stops being a straight line because for you, for Nage, it is still a straight line, <laughs> right? Um, even though from the point of view of Uke and anyone else observing, it is a spiral. Um, and then another thing I wanted to touch on because you mentioned Ma when talking about uh, Sarahawa O oh, is you know the term Ma I which yeah. is big in martial arts, and the eye is the same kanji in Aikido. So it's like the idea of the harmony of ma, of space. And I, like, I liked what the, I guess, O-sensei said, which is that there is no ma. That's even more harmonious than ma eye. Yeah. Right? That's just I. <laughs> right? And, and the idea of ma extending all the way from a pitcher's mound to the batting cage, right, is um, that's a really long distance, right? And the idea of unifying, 66 inches, 66 inches. right, it's like far bigger ma than you would get in any martial art, right? Unless yeah. maybe you're talking like archery or something. Um, but, you know. Well, the whole thing with, with projectiles. Yeah. Guns, bows, arrows. Uh, throwing knives, uh, spears you can throw. Mm -hmm. um, it, it throws uh, my eye off. Well, Sensei, apparently, you know, when he was in uh, Manchuria with Deguchi, when he stopped it could sense bullets coming. In. <laughs> he told people not to fool around with that stuff, by the way. But, you know, he had such a state of unity with everything that helped. Flash of light. Oh, it's a bullet. I better get off the line. Just time sense changed. He radically shifted into a different universe where space and time were much less of an obstacle. A projectile coming fast. Slow down the time sense. Perceive. Oh, flash. I'm going to move. Oh. Now, I, I would not expect to be able to do that. But I remember when I first started out with Dido, you know, uh, there was a lot of work that Dido and Fraser Sensei's did with meditation and energy awareness. And where I noticed it more than anything else was, I don't know, I, I was uh, playing some basketball. And it was just inner murals, you know. But, you know, like, like I, I would, you know, just sense the past was going to go. And if you go this way, they're going to pass it that way. But you sense it. You feel the energy going from that. So that was step and intercept. One time, I think we had about five seconds to left and a half. And a guy was going to inbound the ball. to somebody over there. It was only five seconds, they're just the embodied to it. And so I kind of really calmed down, but I read the energy line. And when he passed it, I intercepted it. And, you know, I, I was, it was, it was near half court, and there was a couple seconds left. And somehow, you know, it was like, I got to get to the hoop. This, like there was a, you know, a, spatial 
thing where all of a sudden you go this way, you wormhole a bit. <laughs> you go. And somehow I got to the group, laid it in just before the buzzer went off. And so there was that. I, I kind of I was thinking, you know, this is pretty cool. You know, it was kind of like, wow, because wow. you could sense energy. And, you know, I mean, great athletes can do that by any, uh, this was intramural basketball at UC Santa Cruz in 1970. So it wasn't anything. But, you know, I, I began to say, well, you know, that's what guys like uh, Jerry West can do, you know, who was a great, great, great player in those days. Still is a great player. I mean, you know, he's one of the best in basketball history. Because he would make plays that way. I thought, wow. But you know, even though it's a physical game and you got to do certain things, you're in a different dimension, dimension of energy. And it's not just in your head, you know, oh my God. Somebody's dribbling the ball and I could catch when their attention, and I steal the ball. <laughs> you go like that, they're gonna change the dribble on it, but that person's thinking about boom, got the ball. And the other thing that happened, you see, not going to always shoot well, but uh, free throw shooting came like Zen archery. Pure body feel, no distance between me at the free throw line and the group. All right. Um, anyway, that, that's uh, you know a little bit of history. So, you know, we're going through different dimensions as, as you kind of do that. It'll help your physical movement, but also uh, you access other dimensions. It's the universe, one, one of my favorite Albert Einstein quotes, which I've only seen once, the universe is multidimensional, as are we. Anyway, I think that's about it, we will be in Mountain View on Sunday, 11.30 to 1. Um, the street property is, I don't know, we're going to be there pretty quick, hopefully. Okay, it's been a long time, a long, long time. So anyway, we'll keep you posted on that. But it, it's uh, sometime this spring, hopefully. Okay. Anyway, thank you. Thank you, Sensei. Okay. First of all, stop.